Hey everyone, it's Anna. Welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for visiting. I shared this tag on my previous video using some of the Red Lead Paperworks stamps that I ordered um, and that came in the mail yesterday. And I had several requests to show how I made this tag, specifically how I um, painted the bird. So I thought I would sit down tonight and just remake this tag and show you how I did it. So I have all my supplies out here. Um, let me set that little guy aside. So I have um, some already die cut tags. Uh, this is the uh, vintage letter six by six pad from Impression Obsession. And I've just die cut it, a piece of it using my stitched tag die. And then I've decided to um, die cut another card um, color, cardstock color, uh, for the back of my tag. And my tag is, my tag die is symmetrical. So you can put the nice, um, side of the die on the back and you can adhere the two back sides of the die together so that the the weird lines from your um, cut plates are together and then you have a nice looking die cut here and a really nice looking die cut here so I'm going to go ahead and do that first of all so that the tag is ready to use here And I'm just using art glitter glue. So I'm just going to adhere those together, putting uh, wrong side to wrong side. So right sides out. If you are a sewer, you know what that means. <laughs> All right. So that looks good. And then I've also pre-cut a piece of watercolor paper, approximately the same size as my tag, and this will become the bird. Uh, the stamps that I have out here are the uh, little set here with the eight different sentiments on it in the frames from Red Lead. And you can go to their website. It's redleadpaperworks.com. Um, here it is here. Uh, and you can find these stamps on their website. So it's red, redleadpaperworks.com. Um, all right, so <clears throat> this is a set that I ordered, but I'm not going to be using it in my um, tag today. So let me just set that aside. Um, but I am going to be using one of these sentiments, so I'm just going to set that there. And then I'm also going to use the postage mark uh, from this cute little set. So I'm going to set this little stamp aside. And the bird I'm going to be using is this one here. I don't know what the name of it is offhand, but again, you can find it on their website in probably the birds category. Their website's really easy to navigate. So um, I'm gonna use this little guy. It's the same bird that I used on the tag I made yesterday. So let's um, get started here. So I have put my bird stamp in my mini Misty. And uh, this is what it looks like when it's adhered to the lid of the Mini Misty. I've just put some scratch paper down in here. And you can see this is the same piece of paper I stamped against uh, yesterday. And I'm going to put my watercolor paper right down here in the corner of the Misty. And I don't need to use a magnet to hold, and pl hold it in place because I'm just going to drag my fingers um, left and down. And that will, or excuse me, right and down, and that will leave the watercolor paper right um, in that nice corner right there. Um, the ink that I'm going to be using is uh, okay to use when you watercolor, so it's the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And I only really need to ink the front half of the bird. See if I stamp over here, um, it starts cutting off at his wings and his hiney. Um, so I don't need to ink the entire stamp. So I'm just kind of going to eyeball it and make sure I get a really good um, coating of ink on there. And then I'm going to pull that watercolor paper down into the right, and that's going to snug it up into the corner. And then I'm going to give that a good press. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to ink it again. I was picked it up to compare it to the tag I made yesterday, so I wanted to make sure I was somewhat close <clears throat> to the layout that I did. Again, I'm pulling that watercolor paper um, down and to the right so it snugs up in that corner. 
and that will allow me to stamp that image in the exact same spot again. Give that a really good press. All right, so there's the uh, stamped image on the watercolor paper. So beautiful, right? So I'm gonna set that aside to give that ink a little bit of time to dry. And then I'm going to put my tag in here as well. And I'm gonna snug up the bottom of the tag in the lower right-hand corner of my Misty. And I'm going to ink the stamp the same way that I did previously. Same area and everything. And then I'm gonna snug that tag up into that lower corner and stamp the image on my tag. And I think I'll give it a little more ink just with a second impression. And snug that tag down into the lower corner and that will ensure that I get to stamp it in the same spot again. And there's the second impression. So that looks beautiful, just like that, I say. Um, and then I'll be able to clean this uh, once I'm all done here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is um, I wanna stamp one of these little sentiments here. Um, let's see, which one do I wanna use? I think I will do birds of a feather. And if you hear something in the background here, it's Oliver. He has a um, bone. He's processing, I guess. I don't know. It's a little chewy thingy. Chew stick. All right. So there's the stamp. And it stamps beautifully the first time, so I don't need to stamp it twice. I'm just going to set it over here to the side so I can clean it before I put it away. And then I'm going to grab this little stamp and I want to grab a block here um, and I want to stamp this stamp directly on my tag. So you can see here I stamped it up here in the corner and then I stamped it over here as well. And again, I'm still using that VersaFine Claire ink. So we've got it up there. And down there. So beautiful. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is set this aside and make sure that ink um, can dry. Um, the next thing I want to do is uh, watercolor my bird and my little sentiment tag here. So I'm using my uh, Mi Lang watercolors. You guys have seen me use these dozens, if not a hundred times or more. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to be using this snap brush from Princeton. It's a snap number four. And I'm just going to, um, using the water here that I have at my desk, I'm going to start with a yellow watercolor and I've just uh, blended my um, pigments up here on my uh, lid here and I'm just going to start with that light uh, yellow color and I don't want to cover up all the white but I want to get um, a really beautiful laying down of that color and you can see I'm not actually painting in broad strokes I'm kind of more polka dotting dotting the um, paint onto the bird. Here, I'll zoom you in so you can see better. So you can see I'm not really painting the image per se, but I'm dotting the color in there and leaving lots of white space and just getting that little bit of yellow into several areas. So the next color that I want to pick up is going to be um, blue so I'm gonna choose this um, it's like a Prussian blue and I'm just gonna make a really thin wash of that color up here on my palette and it might be kind of hard for me to show you the palette with me zoomed in so far but I'll do my best here um, and then I'm just going to start adding that blue color to some areas of the bird where I would think that maybe there are some shadows or maybe I want um, there to be some blue on his feathers and again, I'm just dotting the colors. I'm not doing big uh, grand washes of paint. 
Okay. So a little bit more blue here. And put it under where his wing would be. Okay. And next, um, I'm going to pick up some purple. You can see I used a little bit of purple in here and even some burgundy. So those are the colors that I'm going to pick up next. Ooh, he's close. <laughs> so um, the purple that I used is this one over here in the corner. Um, so I'm just going to, oops, I told you I'm really zoomed in. Um, I'm just going to add that here, and then I'll use a little bit of this purple, uh, this purple as well, and add it up here. So those are the two different color purples I'm going to be using. And I'm going to thin it down a bit. And then just add a little bit of color to the bird. And again, I don't want to take away all my white highlights. I want to leave some of those as bright spots on my bird. And I've picked up just a little bit more of that um, second purple pigment. Put a little bit up here by his pretty eye. And now I think I'll grab a little bit of that burgundy. And that one is um, up here in the corner. I use this second red here from the end. You can see how pretty that is. And I just dotted it a little bit on his neck here. And I might add a little bit of blue to that to kind of bring down that red. I don't want to look like he's got a bloody throat. <laughs> that would be terrible. And just dotting a little bit of that color elsewhere so there's um, areas that where it repeats in the design and then the uh, next color I want to pick up is again this yellow ochre here in the middle and I also am gonna add um, just a smidge of white um, it's the color up here in the corner I'm gonna add just a smidge of white to that um, and kind of give it a creamy uh, appearance. And I think I need to let that dry. There's a little bit of light here up on its head, like maybe the sun sunlight is hitting the top of his head. And this is going with just a little bit of uh, lavender here under his eye. See, I'm still just dotting the color. I'm not actually painting in broad strokes still. All right, now that that um, red has dried down a little bit, I'm going to use some of that yellow ochre that I mixed with the white. Yeah, I think it's still not, still not dry.
I'm gonna, I'm gonna dab that up just a smidge. It's getting a little muddy there and I'd like to keep that area around his eye kind of bright there. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside so that that can dry. Um, I don't wanna keep fiddling with it if it's not dry. Um, but you also can see here on my tag that I made yesterday uh, that I actually have painted the stamped image on the tag. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Um, so again, this is just the stamped image on the tag. I'm gonna use an olive green for the uh, branches uh, or the leaves on the branches and just kind of dabble some green on there doesn't take a lot of precision. And then I liked um, I liked the green, but I'm going to add a little bit of the yellow ochre as well, just to pop some uh, light into these leaves here. And then next what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the legs of the bird and the branch and the shadow under the uh, branch. So I'm going to paint the legs of my bird gray, like a blue gray. And just put a little bit of paint in there. I still want to be able to see the stamp lines, so I don't want to completely obliterate <laughs> the stamped image. But see, just by adding a little bit of color there uh, makes them look real nice. And then for my branch, I'm just going to use a medium brown here. And paint just the top edges of the branch, making careful, making sure not to, you know, get too carried away out of the lines. And you can leave the branch um, unpainted as well. So that looks great. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of a shadow under the branch. Here you can see uh, where I watercolored under the branch there with the blue. So I'm gonna use the Payne's Gray again. It's that really beautiful kind of midnight blue color. And I'm gonna keep a little bit of a distance from the branch um, and just kind of dabble that blue paint um, kind of in the shape of the uh, stamped image. And that's just going to give the impression that there's a shadow there, a drop shadow. And you could do it under the bird's body here too. And I like to kind of keep everything going on the same, either like the same side of the branch. Um, so everything's kind of going in the same direction. And then you can thin that out with water. If you get a little heavy handed, you can just kind of thin it out with water. There we go. And now the next thing I'm going to do is set this aside. So I'm done with painting my um, tag. I think that's pretty beautiful just by itself. Um, so the next good thing I'm going to do is just add some color here to my sentiment, um, just so it's not just so stark white. So I'm just going to use some of the colors that I have in my painting here. Uh, some of the yellow, some of the blue. and let that just sit aside over here to dry. All right, um, I'm gonna go back into the eye of my bird area here and see if I can get some of that yellow ochre with, uh, mixed with white to kind of pop um, under his eye a little bit. And I don't think I can, but that's okay. I'll keep working on this, adding uh, more yellow ochre to the image. And you'll see how that really livens up. Just adding that yellow really kind of livens up the image. Down the edges of his feathers. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit more blue in here. 
my other image um, had a little blue in it and I really liked that. So I'm going to use that same um, Payne's Gray. Just to add some color here. I have to say, I um, hope I'm not getting sick. I have lost my sense of smell, it seems. I was cooking dinner tonight and could not have told you what I was making. Completely no smell, which I thought was very unusual. So I hope I'm not getting sick again. I've had a runny nose all day. So it's going to be dreadful if I'm sick again. All right. So I think I need to um, let this bird be before I paint the life out of him. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let him dry just a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and cut this out with scissors. Um, I'm just going to cut right along the edges of the black there. And I have to keep watching the time because I actually have a meeting tonight at 10 um, that I need to host. So I got to watch the clock. I don't want to be late. <laughs> Just gonna cut this out here, and some of my um, some of my coworkers that might be watching my video at some point. So hello, you know who you are. All right, so there's that cute little guy, um, and you can add a little bit of ink if you'd like. Um, I'll just ink just a smidge around the edges here. It's still kind of damp, so I want to be careful not to bend it too much or ink it too much because with that paper being damp it can get a little out of hand really quickly. So there's that. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go ahead and glue this down to my tag here. Oh, I let it sit too long. get that glue nice to the edges and I'm gonna um, set it right down over a part of my postage stamp and then I'm gonna set a block on that just so it um, has a little bit of pressure and dries flat all right all right so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to fussy cut the bird out of the watercolor paper and just the bird so I'm actually going to um, I don't need to cut outside the bird. I'm going to cut right on the edge of the bird. And if I cut off a little bit of the squiggly lines and leave them on the card, the uh, watercolor paper, that's okay. Because I have the stamped image that will make up for anything that I cut off of this bird. So I'm trying to be really careful because this watercolor is still, still a little bit. So there's that piece and I don't have to cut his legs out and I don't have to cut the branch out so all those little fussy bits you can leave them behind and it's almost like magic when you adhere the bird to your tag um, how he just blends right in to the stamped image. So now I can see some white edges here around my cardstock or my watercolor paper. So I'm just gonna, oops, I'm just gonna grab a um, marker and I'm gonna use the bullet or the uh, blunt end of it. And I'm just gonna really quickly drag it along the edge of that cardstock and that's going to mask the edges of that white paper and really make it look like the, um, the die cut piece or the uh, cutout piece is really nicely done. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adhere this little cut bird down onto my tag. So let's see, how much glue do I need to put on him? 
So I've got a little smidge over here, quarter inch or so, that I don't need to put glue on. But I want to make sure I get glue really nice and good up to that edge there. I don't want him peeling off along that edge. Okay. So next I'm just going to stick him right down here and I'm gonna use a block again to kind of weight him down and uh, let him dry. So yeah, so those little bit of, um, fussy bits around the edge of his head, they're back. The little fussy bits around his belly are back. Let me get uh, this block cleared off here. And you can see him drying through the acrylic. So that's super fun. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is, um, I noticed here that I inked the edges of my tag. I probably should have done that before I glued the bird on, but that's okay, we'll get to it. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, glue on some lace. So this is some of the Dollar Tree lace that I like so much. And I'm just going to use this uh, quarter inch double-sided tape um, to add a little bit of adhesive to the back of the tag. Just along that edge there. And give it a quick snip. Now I can peel the backing off of there and I can add my ribbon. I'm gonna add it this way so I can see, make sure I get a nice straight line here. Or not. <laughs> and give that a good press and that double-sided adhe double sided adhesive will hold that cotton lace right in place and then just trim off the extra. Snip, snip. Snip, snip. Looks cute so far. And then I'm going to trim off the back of my bird here. I don't need his little body sticking out past the edge of this tag. So I'm just going to give that a quick snip, and because I can see the white core of that watercolor paper, I'm going to take my black marker again and just run it right along the edge of that watercolor paper. I don't need to go along the whole tag, I just want to, just want to knock back uh, that bright white um, of the watercolor paper. And there's a little bit of white there that you can see, but that's the glue, so that will disappear when it dries. And um, I do want to ink around the edges a little bit, so I'm going to use... Oh, I was going to use Vintage Photo, but I don't see it. Oh, here it is. It got put underneath ground espresso. <laughs> so I'm just going to use one of my blender brushes and really carefully just ink around the edges since I just added that lace. <laughs> I get a little ink on the lace, that's okay. Um, and because I've already added my bird, so I'm just doing this really carefully. I would should have done this uh, before I stuck the bird down and certainly before I stuck the lace down, but that's okay. All right, then the next thing I wanna do is I have this piece of uh, seam binding here that I've dyed um, with various different colors. It's a really beautiful green piece. I thought that would look really pretty with this rusty pumpkin orange on the back of the tag. So I'm just gonna get that shoved through there, maybe. Oh, good heavens. I think I'm struggling because I know I have a time limit here. <laughs> But I don't want to be late. All right, so I'm just going to pull that up so the ends are fairly even. And then I have a piece of um, hemp cord here uh, that I'll just cut a, a piece off of. Got some paper stuck to my scissors there. 
Um, and now one thing that I've learned is if I tie, um, when I try to tie a bow, if I put the project upside down to me, um, my bows end up right side up. I don't know why. There's something about the way that I tie them that makes them upside down if I tie them with the project facing me. So I've just learned turn the project around and don't that way I don't have to change the way I comfortably tie bows but my bows then end up uh, right side up <laughs> I don't know what it is about well how I tie a bow that makes them upside down if I tie them the other way so why fight right there we go and now I can just trim off a little bit of this end here so it's not quite so whimsical. <laughs> and then I have some bulb pins. Um, I can grab one of these. And I can grab a cute little charm here from my stash. Let's see. I'll just grab one real, real quick here. Um, I'll just use this cute little crown. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Again, struggling because of a deadline, I think. <laughs> and then I'm just going to add this little bulb pin up here through my seam binding. And behind the knot of my twine. You could even go through the twine if you want. And now I have a super cute little tag with a watercolored bird on it that you would never know was stuck on to the face of the tag from a different piece of paper. <laughs> Isn't it cute? I just love these. I love how it turned out. Um, so there's the one I just made. Here's the one I made last night. And uh, so you can see the difference. So super fun. I hope you enjoy and I hope you're inspired. Of course, I'll put links to the tag, um, to the bird dyes, uh, to, at least to the website where you can browse their catalogs um, and to the six by six paper from Impression Obsession. I'll put that link down below as well. But you can see how beautiful the watercolor actually takes to that um, paper. Isn't that pretty? So I was quite pleased with that when I discovered that last night. So anywho, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great night and I am off to a meeting. I'll talk to you later.